Okay, if you had decided to use R instead of Excel, this is how we'd go through this. Um, what we would do is starting off with our main screen when we open it up, we typically get a look like this. Again, this is launching R Studio, not R itself. Um, you might have had different colors with this. Again, if you don't like your default colors, you can change that over in Global Options and over with Appearance, you can pick a new editor theme. Idle Fingers, that's the one that I typically utilize. I find it a lot easier on the eyes, but it's just entirely appearance. First thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go and start a new file, a new R script. So we open that up and we notice now that we have this popping up here. This is our notebook. This is where we want to be putting our code in. Down here below, this is where our code is executed. This bit here, this is our display screen. This is where files will be imported. This is where we will view whatever pops up for graphs. And this is our environment. This is all of our data sets that we are working with. So first thing, first thing, let's save our file. So we're going to go save as, and I have where I currently have my data sets set. I'm going to save the file right here. And this is going to be our first discussion. So I'll save it there. I already have it, but I'll overwrite it just the same. Next thing we want to do is we want to set our working directory so that R knows where to look for files and where to save outputs. And in order to do that, we're going to go over to files and there's more ways to do this than this, but this is one of the easiest ways for point and click. We'll go to these three little dots, go to directory from here. You're just going to go browse through and you're going to find where you want to store this. So for me, I'm going to go to courses, business 230, software, our workbooks, displaying data. This is going to be my working directory. This is where all my files are currently saved and where I'm going to be pulling any new files from. So open and we'll see I have now this discussion book saved and my two data files saved as CSVs. What I want to do then is I'm going to go, this is just entirely a cheat way of doing it. Just for your first time, it makes it a lot easier. Let's go like this and we'll go more and we're going to go set as working directory. So if we do that, we notice that, hey, down here in our console, we now have some code popping up. This here is where we've just been setting as our working directory. It's a good idea to copy this and to put this right up top here as our first line of code. This is just saying, hey, this is the folder that I want to work out of. This is where things are going to be. Next thing we want to do before we start playing with our data or anything like that, we're actually going to use a few packages. One of the big packages we're going to be using for data visualization is known as ggplot. That's the grammar of graphics. The way we're going to get this to be uploaded, to be put into this is we are going to install. As soon as I start typing, it says, Hey, is this what you're looking for? You can hit tab to just say, yes, that is the one, or you can just keep typing. Once we have install packages, Keep in mind, everything in here is case sensitive. So if you use a capital I, it's not going to pick it up. I want to install the package of ggplot2. And this is where I always make a mistake. I can never remember one of these needs to have quotations on it. The other one doesn't. What I always do is I just give it a try and if it works or not. So install packages, ggplot2. There we go. Our console is doing something. This is actually working for us. So, okay, that is downloaded. Next, what we want to do is we've downloaded the package. We now want to actually utilize it. So to get this package to be ready for us, we need to go to our library, right? Again, it pops up and from our library, we're going to activate ggplot2. And sorry, as I've gone through this in this install packages, you're probably like, Keith, how did you get that to pop up? I completely jumped over that. In order to actually run the code we have up in the above, you're going to hit control enter. You can also run this code by clicking this run button right up here. And it says right there, Hey, use control enter as a shortcut. 
So library, ggplot2, control enter, and we're good. We now have this for us to use. Next thing we want to do, we want to get our data into this for us to be able to read. So what we're going to do is we're going to use, let's save this in here. We need to give it a reference point. So I'm going to save it as qual for my qualitative data. And then we're going to create a little arrow. Hey, I'm going to call this thing that I'm inputting qual and I want to read again. It starts to say, Hey, do you want to read a CSV? Yes, I do. And the CSV that I want to read is you need our quotations here. Qualitative dot CSV. If you forget what it is, right? We can always look over here and in our working directory, we have this CSV. This is what we're trying to read in. So this gets read in saved as this variable. So let's hit control enter and read that in. We now have this popping up. I can click on it and it will show me our data set to view. It just opened it in a new tab here. I can also close it. I could also, if I wanted to view it, I could just write qual, control enter, and it pops up here in my console. So another one there. If that's too much information, I can do a bit of a shorthand. I can just go head, put some parenthesis around that, hit control enter, and it will just give me my first six or so lines of this data set. So if I'm just interested to say, okay, what's just the first few observations? I can use that function as well. What we're going to want to do is we are going to want to actually take a look at how to graph this in order to take a look at it as a bar chart. And to do that, we're going to go and use our ggplot. Now, the grammar of graphics can sometimes get quite confusing. It can be, oh, okay, what is going on? If ever you want to try some higher level, if ever you want to work beyond it farther, you can always go to the help here. And in help, we have cheat sheets. And one of the cheat sheets is data visualization with ggplot2. Let's click that. If we click it, it's opening up on another screen, but it says, here we go. Do you want to download this? It's just a PDF document with all of our tips and tricks. So I'm going to save that to my desktop. Taking a look at this, it's going to show us all of our different ways that we can graph using ggplot. And you're like, oh my goodness, that's a whole bunch of information. Yeah, 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 it is. Let's just take a look at what we're looking for. So what do we have, right? This is talking about different kind of variables. And it's like, hey, one variable, continuous, three variables, discrete, continuous, right? These words should mean something to you, right? These were part of our initial definitions, discrete, continuous variables. In our case, we're just dealing with a discrete variable, right? We just have colors. Red is discrete. Blue is discrete. And it's just a one variable discrete. So it's just saying that what we want to do is we want to have just ggplot. This is just our file name that we're utilizing. And then we're going to use geombar. So let's go and try that. We're going to go ggplot. We're going to read in our data set of qual and we're going to go ah sorry we're case sensitive geom and starts to say okay which one do you want well r open close parenthesis and oh no we need something for our x well yeah right it needs to know what are we going to be putting on our x axis how is this going to go through so we need to take a step back and we need to update this accordingly. So we need to update to actually have a X variable. And the way that we do that is we say that we're going to use an aesthetic AES and we're going to say that, Hey, X equals, and we need to say X equals, well, the heading of the data set that we're going to utilize. So, you're like, oh no, what was that heading? Well, two ways. A, we have it right here. When we want a head of our qualitative data set. We have this first guy here that doesn't have an observation number beside it. This is color. This was our heading. If you didn't have that, you could also jump back over to data here and open this guy up. 
color. Well, right, color is our heading and we're going down from there. Keep in mind, everything's case sensitive. This is a capital C. So X equals color. Hit that now and I have my bar chart. From here, we don't have our full number of, we, we don't have our axes labeled. They're kind of labeled, but we don't have our full title and everything like that. So we can go plus, right? Plus is how we add other things to this graph. We can go plus GG title. And what is our label? Our label is just gonna be, um, let's go, sorry. Need to put in quotations because it's text. Frequency of smarty colors. And if I now hit control enter, we have our updated graph there and we have our bars accordingly. If we want to save this, if we want to export this for us to be able to look at rather than just having it here, two ways we can do the point and click. We can go export, save as image. We can also go um, GG save, and we just put in the file name that we want to save it as. So I could go qualitative bar chart dot PNG, control enter, and it will save in my working directory as a picture. There we go. So that does us for our bar chart. What we'll take a look at next is how to go and create a histogram if we are dealing with quantitative data. So if we want to deal with quantitative data, we can do this in much the same way. Uh, to start off, we we'll want to read in our data set. So just continuing on with the R file we were using before, let's go and read in, I'll call it quan, and that's going to be read CSV, and that's going to be my quantitative.csv. If I read that in, I now have this here. Again, I could open it up if I wanted to quickly view the file. Height in centimeters and going down. Again, if we wanted to, we could go ahead of quan and view it that way. No need to do that altogether though. Now what we want to do is we want to create a histogram from this. Now again, R like Excel is just going to kind of guess what you want for your number of bins and bin width. You are, need to, you are going to need to figure this out for what it is. Um, in order to figure this out as to how many observations we have, we can use a command as dim for dimensions of quant. And if we do that, it says, okay, our quantitative data set is 20 by one. So, okay, it has 20 rows and one column is what that's saying. So we have 20 observations. So using our rule of two to the K, again, we want two to the K such that that's just above 20. Well, two to the four, control enter, 16, two to the five, 32. So we would want to use, and we can make little notes in our, if we do this little hashtag, this now becomes a note, it doesn't become code. We can say that we are, uh, we can go rule of two to the power of K suggests five bins. So, okay, we have this little note for ourselves now. We can also find out what our maximum and minimum heights are by using max from quan and we have our maximum of 227. So again, we can write that down, max of 227. We can similarly find the minimum, minimum quan, and we have a minimum of 127. So minimum of 127. If you're not seeing that again, when I hit control enter, the output pops up down here at the bottom. And by putting it with the hashtag in front of it, I'm making it a note, it doesn't actually pop up as code. Right, it just jumps over it. So now that I have that, I can figure out my bin width. And so I want my bin width to be my maximum value. So 227 
minus my minimum value of 127. And I want to take all that and divide it by my suggested number of bins being 5. That gives me an answer of 20. So suggested bin width of 20. Okay, from here I can actually go and create my histogram. So again, I'm going to use ggplot and I'm going to read in my quantitative data set. And in this case, I'm going to use geom histogram. Again, from here, jumping over into my aesthetics, I want my x to be, what was the name of my variable again? We can click on the data. My variable was height, again, case sensitive with a capital H. So x is height. If we hit that, we see, boom, it gives us a histogram and it looks ugly, right? And you notice there's a little warning here. Stat bin, using bins of 30, pick a better value with bin width. So, okay, let's go update, let's put in some better bins. What we can do for that, we can go right here, we can go comma to add new information. And for myself, I don't like to work outside of this basic screen, I don't like having to scroll. So as soon as I hit comma, I can hit enter. You notice it doesn't fully left justify. R knows that this is still part of the same code. So I can now put in bin width and hey, is this what you want? Yes. And I want bin width of 20, comma, enter. And I can put in bins. Hey, do you want bins? Yes. And I want bins of five. So let's see how that works. So going right back up to the top, hitting control, enter. And it gives me a histogram. Looks not so great. We can kind of finesse this a little bit. So let's go back to this bins equals five. Let's go comma, one more. I can go C-O-L, short form for color. This is gonna be my line color. And let's change that to black. So if I run this now, I have it actually outlined and I can see what's happening there. Beyond that, what we can also do is we can change this as well. We know that our minimum value is 127. So, what we can do is we can do another comma and we can go and we can set a boundary of 127 so that we know that, hey, this is the minimum. I don't want my histogram going any lower than this. So if you run that, changes it to 127 and it updates the scale a little bit. I like my scale to look a little bit nicer than that. I want to say that I'm gonna close these bins to the left uh, again, left, and we can take a look at how that updates things. Didn't do too much there. This is where we're really going to make it look nice. We're going to go plus, and what we're going to do is we're going to include a scale for our X, and it's going to be continuous. And if we hit tab to see what our options are, we want to put in some breaks. And here in breaks, this is where we're going to put in our values as to what we're counting by. So, okay, we have five bins with width of 20, right? That's what we were suggested up here. Five bins width of 20 with a minimum value of 127. So if I want to actually start at 127, I could set my breaks as 127, 147, 167, and up. I could also decide to set my breaks a little bit differently. I could start at 125. If that was the case, I'd want to update this boundary to 125, and I'd want to create a list of breaks. So to create this list, I'm going to go C, open, close brackets, and I'm going to create my list. So I'm going to start at 127. Jumping up by a 20, 147, uh, 167, 187, uh, 207, and to 27. Okay, oops, I made a little bit of a mistake there. I said we wanted to start a little bit below our lowest value there. We wanted to start at 125. But we have minimum of 127, maximum of 227. This gives us our five bins. Let's just take a look at this and see how this guy works out for us. 
There we go. We see that these are a little bit off, but we get our idea going on there. Let's throw in one more at 247. Let's close this to the right. Let's set this boundary to 127 and playing around. Let's see, is this how we want it? That looks pretty good to me. In fact, we don't even need this last bin. We can do one final update. And there we go. We have our one, two, three, four, five bins. First bin is from 127 up to 147. 147 up to 167, on and on and on. Last thing we could do with this is, well, we already have our axis titles. We can add our actual title itself. So again, to add a title, we're just gonna go plus GG title parenthesis and hit tab to get our options available to us. Label is what we want. And we can go in quotations, histogram of heights in centimeters. If we hit control enter, we get our updated graph. Finally, if we want to save this again, we can use the GG save function, open close brackets, you can start typing, or if you're not sure as to what your code is, again, you can always hit tab and it pops up for you. We want file name, and we're going to save this as the histogram.csv.png. And there we go. We have it saved as an image. Again, we can go to our working directory, and oh, I'm in the wrong working directory. Right there, displaying data, and I now have my histogram being saved as well and available to see. So that's working in R. You can see that we have a lot more flexibility in our creation of our graphs in this. At very basics, we could have just cut out a lot of this and left it be. Um, but you do have to know a little bit more what you're doing. And some of it's just playing around, right? Some of it's just playing around and seeing what works. One of your biggest friends, if you do really want to work through R, is just a Google search, right? Googling how do I create a histogram in R using ggplot? Something like that will give you a walkthrough of all of this in great detail. You're having a problem. Your axes aren't lining up the way you want them to. You Google that, I'm sure there is some form out there on the internet that can walk you through how to fix that problem. It's the best thing with R is there's an amazing community out there that is able to help you work through all of these situations. So that's our overview of using R. We've seen how to use it for qualitative data to make our bar chart. We've seen how to use it for quantitative data to make our histogram.